That's, uh, this came in from Diane on email, and Diane says, should PayPal be able to grant itself censorship powers? You remember last week on the show I was talking to Toby Young from the Free Speech Union, who had three of his accounts uh, nuked on PayPal for no obvious reason why not. But this is a development of this story. Um, apparently, uh, PayPal now intends to give itself more powers to restrict free speech. So from November the 3rd, uh, PayPal says it's going to, uh, going to be able to strip income from users who violate their speech restrictions. But these restrictions are seemingly arbitrary. I don't know if you had a look, Steve, at their sort of guidelines. It's really unclear yeah. what, what would violate any, anything. And it's, it feels a bit like... Now, I don't know, but it feels as though that kind of nebulous quality is deliberate because what it means is they can violate things at any time for whatever reason. Oh, yeah, I think one of the words is objectionable. Well, that's suddenly subjective, and then yeah. who's that? It's definitely up to them. Also, they don't tell you which part of their terms and conditions you violated. Right. It tends to be the way on the internet. If you get a video taken down, they'll just say, you broke our terms, rather than, oh, here's what you did wrong, here's well, the moment of it, because therefore you can't argue. That's the scariest thing, isn't it? I, mean, I don't want to get all dystopian about this, but that is exactly what happens in the trial by Kafka, insofar as he's accused of something, but they won't tell him what he's done wrong. And the more he asks, the more they just put him mm. aside, and he's even punished. Uh, I won't tell you what happens. Um, but it's probably I think you know what happens at the end. Um, so, yeah, so that's the case, isn't it, Josh? That they do, they're just, you know, what, what is going on with these big tech companies? Why do they have this? Why are they all in ideological lockstep? Why do they all censor people for the same reasons? Well, because they want to feel like they're a moral company. I think that, that sort of goes into their, their, their mission statements. But, of course, what is them? What, how do they define morality? Yeah. How do they define being on the right side of history? And uh, you had, uh, was it Dr. Colin Wright? Someone who's a yeah, biologist. Uh, uh, yeah, who's also had his account frozen yes. for basically saying that sex is binary. Now, they're saying that's hate speech. And that's enough for him but to be knocked out. He's an evolutionary biologist. Yes, exactly. <laughs> but that's, but, and that's it. By using facts now become hate speech. And, and the thing about, the insidious thing about PayPal is, number one, is the power it has. Yeah. I mean, it's ubiquitous, really, for online payments and whatever. And that's how people make a living. So you really can destroy someone's life. I mean, that, that's a significant... This is a significant step forward, isn't it? Because it's all very well talking about social media censorship, Steve, you know, where Twitter boots someone off. And that's not good. Right. But now people who are, you know, are in charge of financial services mm. deciding who can spend money where and how. That's a step further, isn't it? It is. We should have seen this coming. And I think this refers back to your opening monologue that actually it's not about whether they're in step about an ideology. It's the power that they have. Yeah. It's the so because even if you agreed with their current ideology or if they changed at some point, if they've got the power, they will go against what you think. Of course. The point is, if you're going to let a company become um, the, the massive only provider of a service. You have a monopoly, eventually you're going to end up disagreeing with that monopoly and it will be shutting people down. It's a problem of unbridled capitalism, which happens more online because there are, there are fewer uh, restrictions in. So yeah. if you end up letting people get in a position where they effectively own the payment via the internet, then you've given them too much power. Yeah. You've, we've given too much power. I mean, it's very much short-termism, isn't it? We've got to think into the future. Who, who will, we can allow these people to have these, these powers now. Who's going to have them in the future? Yeah. How will that affect us? I think the best solution is just, well, free speech for all, right? That would, yeah, well, you solution. say that, but when it comes to... I mean, I'm actually scared talking about this thing because my PayPal account is, like, m the centre of my life. Like, that's how I pay for board games. <laughs> and if they Which, shut me that down, is the most important thing to you. that is the most important thing to me. And if they shut me down, I'm going to go mad. So, is there not another way you can pay for these board games? <laughs> no, no, they because it's all like kind of, We all use PayPal, and you know, okay. hello, hello, Facebook board game group. There is apparently a big board game community. I find it quite sinister, but apparently they're harmless <laughs> enough. 